Hey all, uh, welcome to Math 315, Section 3 with Edward Raldes. That's me. Uh, my last name is generally hard to say, so let's just keep uh, references to me by Edward. That seems pretty easy. In this video, we're going to go through the syllabus for Math 315, Section 3. Um, to go through the syllabus, you guys are going to get videos, like you're going to get videos for basically everything else in this uh, course this semester. The videos I can't promise are going to be great. Some of the videos are going to be uh, better than others, but hopefully none of them are terrible. There's many ways you guys can give me feedback throughout the semester. So hopefully between uh, the various pointers that everyone gives me throughout the semester on these videos and the fact that they're not going to be terrible from the start, we should get through the semester okay. Um, okay, so I said we we're going to go through the syllabus. That's enough of looking at me. Let's now go through the syllabus. OK, so you all should be able to make it to Blackboard just fine. And if you go to the 315 shell, you should see a very sparse welcome screen. The point here is I don't really like Blackboard. Uh, it doesn't really work for me at all. So I'm going to give you a link to my website where you can find all course materials and we will use my website throughout. I recommend you uh, follow this link and then immediately bookmark it so that you don't have to try to spell my last name in the future. It's not very easy. Uh, the meta section drops down to give you a list of links that I have posted already. We'll go over the syllabus first. Uh, but you can already see that I already have a Zoom link to our uh, Zoom session up online. I've got a link to our Piazza discussion forum. If you've never used Piazza before, uh, don't worry. It should be just fine. It's a place for us to uh, have public discussions about any of the course content or the way the course is going throughout the semester. And students can answer other students' questions. And I, of course, will also answer student questions as we go. If you don't like speaking to me in person via Zoom, speaking to me through um, online discussion forums via Piazza, and instead want to remain anonymous, I have created a Google form that I named Ask that allows you to ask questions anonymously as we go through this course. Uh, I'll say a bit more about Zoom, Piazza, and Google Ask as we go through the syllabus. So let's check out the syllabus. Here is our syllabus for Math 315, uh, specifically for Section 3, uh, Statistical Methods 1. Right off the bat, here is a link to my email address. If you need to get in touch with me for whatever reason, please do email me and uh, let me know what's going on for whatever it may be. Uh, content delivery. Links to course materials and content will be posted to my website, as you just saw in an example. Most content will be delivered asynchronously via YouTube videos. I have a YouTube channel. It has videos to other courses. It has links to other courses' videos. So I will post links on my website uh, for specific videos meant for this class. You can go check out any of the videos in my channel you want, but Specifically for this class, as you just saw on my webpage, I will post links to the specific videos you are to watch. Okay, so content delivery is going to be mostly asynchronous, but I am going to hold synchronous office hours. That is at our regularly, regular scheduled class times, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, from 12 to 12.50, on our Zoom channel, our Zoom session, with a passcode of Purple Rain. I will hold office hours. I really intend these office hours to be a place for you to productively study and work on course assignments with a coach or a cheerleader or whatever you need, me right there beside you. So if you get stuck while we're doing some difficult statistics work, I don't want you to freak out and get frustrated. I want you to simply have me there to ask questions about what you need to do to progress. Now, it's very possible that you all will start asking me every question for every step along the way, and I might push you off a little bit, but generally I think it's going to be helpful if you have a coach right there next to you to help you through the assignments. 
So the hope is that this is going to provide a little bit more structure in your studies for those of you that need a more structured study environment. But don't feel obligated to attend these hours. They are here if you need or want them, but you don't have to show up to them uh, in any way. Eavesdropping on other students' questions is highly encouraged. So by all means, if you just want to show up to listen to the other questions students ask, I would appreciate it if you'd at least just show your face, say hello, tell me who you are, but then by all means, you can turn off your video and just sit and hang out. Course communication is generally going to be through Zoom, but when we are not able to meet, uh, you know, electronically face-to-face, -face, uh, we will use Piazza for class discussions. Uh, and I encourage you, rather than immediately emailing me questions, I encourage you to post your questions on Piazza. That's because there's probably more students than just you with that same question, and I'd like us to be able to address the question amongst all the students. So sign up for Piazza here. If you prefer direct communication where I can identify who you are, that's what email is for. If you prefer indirect, anonymous communication, then I ask you to go to the Google form named Ask. Let's just check it out really quick. This is all there is to it. Anonymously ask questions in class. You type in whatever question you have, submit the answer. No need for your name. I have no idea who you are. Uh, the implications of the anonymity are greater than you might think at first. So I ask you to take a minute to think about how you want me to address you specifically if I don't know who you are. <laughs> okay, that's generally tough. I reserve the right to not answer all questions on our Google form, ask. I get to choose. Um, if you intend to give me feedback anonymously, I ask that you give me constructive and respectful feedback. If at any point this form goes poorly, as judged by me, I reserve the right to take it down. I don't expect that to happen, but it has happened in the past. Um, if for any reason I need to address everyone in the course, I'm going to send out an email to your student email account. Okay, great. Uh, I think that's going to be the most important part of communication for this class. Uh, content delivery, that's communication from me to you about the course material, is going to happen via YouTube videos office hours on Zoom, course communication on Piazza, email, or from that Google form named Ask. The rest of this, I think we can go a little bit quicker through, like the course description. Here it is. I'll let you read it on your own. Student learning objectives. We're going to learn how to do stats. Uh, the thing you guys might be most terrified about is that stats actually happens on a computer via a programming language. We're going to use the programming language R, and I ask that you remain open-minded at this point because I can help you get through R. It is intimidating at first, but we can do this together. Don't be terrified. There is no for-purchase textbook. All course materials I have in this class are absolutely free. The first one is going to be a PDF book named Introductory to Statistics for the Life and Biomedical Sciences. When you follow that link, and I remind you that this is absolutely free, even though it suggests you pay $15, watch this, click and slide. You pay $0 and add it to your ebook cart. They'll ask you for your email address, and I don't think any other information, and then it'll allow you to download the PDF yourself. Uh, that's going to be our main source of content, as I expect people in the life sciences to see the statistics material outside of this course. That book is a little bit dense, sometimes a bit difficult to read. So I'm also going to draw material from this online book which is much easier to read, in my opinion. So we're going to kind of bounce back and forth these two books as we go through the course, but I'll help you through that as the semester moves along. 
Some additional requirements, uh, consistent access to a computer is going to be essential to master the material of this course. If this presents a problem for you, please email me. Remember, all the way at the top, right off the bat, there is my email address. Uh, we're going to learn to program, we're going to learn to code using R and the interactive environment RStudio. My next video will help us through getting set up with R and RStudio. Uh, this semester is going to be unique, to say the least. I've certainly never experienced a semester like this before. I can't imagine any of you have either. I have tried to reframe the course grading in light of that. So our course grade is going to consist of five reports for 10% of your grade each, total of 50%, and course notes, which you will take and create for 50% of your grade. Both of those assignments, reports and course notes, will be created using R Markdown from within our studio and compiled into a PDF or HTML. I will have another video that shows you what this means to get us started. So I'll actually leave the rest of this for you all to read on your own. Here's a description of what the reports are to look like. The general idea is each report is going to be about a new statistical method applied to a data set that you have not used in your course notes. So there's going to be uh, one report on t-tests, one report on two sample t-tests, one report on analysis of variance, that's what that weird acronym means, one report on simple linear regression, and the fifth report on multiple linear regression. For full credit, each report must follow the general outline below, report outline. Uh, you're going to use different data sets than you use in your course notes. You're going to, I'm going to force you to put plots into these and you are allowed to resubmit at most one time to improve your grade, your uh, report, after receiving feedback on it from me. Okay, here's the report outline. That's not going to be super crucial for getting through the syllabus, so I'll leave that there for you to um, peruse in your own time. Course notes are going to be a formal uh, laid out notes that you take from within this course. I don't know how else to describe this. I've tried my best to describe this right here in paragraph form. I'm going to create a video that helps you uh, see what I intend this description to mean, and hopefully that'll get us started um, on the course notes. My overall thinking with the course notes is many of you are not statistics majors. So memorizing cold, hard facts about statistics is A, not going to come easy, and B, not going to be super helpful for you in the long term. Because even if you can memorize statistics stuff in the short term, it's probably not going to stick with you. So what I want these course notes to be is a reference for you, for future you, that you can come back to anytime you need to remind yourself about statistics work. That's what I want these course notes to be, some sort of formal reference that you create so you can come back to it later on in life. Uh, okay, right. I'm going to give us a video to explain course notes a little bit more later on, but nonetheless, you can read this on your own. There's going to be no formal tests. Instead, the reports are going to take place of tests. Uh, the makeup policy seems moot because of the course grading and the assignments as described above. Okay. I, as a diversity policy, my biggest issue is respect. I absolutely demand that you all respect each other during our Zoom meetings and on our online discussion forum, Piazza. I absolutely demand that I respect you all on our online communication strategies. But I also demand that you all respect me. This is going to be through and through in all directions. I insist that we respect each other. We all come from a variety of backgrounds with a variety of experiences that have led to our own individual beliefs. And statistics should not get in the way of any of that. 
we should be able to learn in a friendly, encouraging, positive environment. And that's what I'm going to insist upon for a diversity policy. Academic integrity. I think we all know that any sign of cheating on any assignment will be addressed directly according to university standards. I now see my typo there. Um, nonetheless, I'm going to encourage you to help each other through this course as we go via our online discussion forum. If at any time it's unclear where that line is to be drawn, just remember that you each need to turn in your own work. I think that's going to be the biggest issue. Uh, if for any reason you need support for some sort of disability, please let me know as soon as you can and also contact the Disability Support Service. Uh, I am a mandated reporter. If you don't know that, I encourage you to read this paragraph on your own. And last down here is a course outline. Uh, for the most part, we're going to follow this pretty linearly from the top to the bottom as best we can as we go through the semester. That was a quick overview of the syllabus. The only points I'm really going to remind you about are here outside of the syllabus are three more links to our means of communication. Zoom for office hours at regularly scheduled class times, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 12 to 1, well, 12 to 12.50. Otherwise, you're going to get posted to this web page links to specific videos that you should watch for the statistics content. Uh, the Piazza Forum for discussions uh, will, you can get to the Piazza Forum for discussions here. And here is our Google Form ask for you to anonymously ask me questions as we go through the syllabus. So right off the bat, if any parts of this video were not clear, I encourage you to ask them in office hours uh, on Monday, Wednesday or Friday from 12 to 1, or post a new topic on the Piazza Forum or politely and respectfully say something on Google Ask. If anything in this first video wasn't clear, please let me know through one, your preferred means of communication, uh, these three ways. Thanks so much.